One of the go-to tactics in FM is the 433. I've created a few versions. Here's a city version. Another with completely different roles. And one we use in the lower leagues in Italy. But how do we make the ideal 433? Today I'm going to show you exactly how to get this one in the bank. So right from the get-go, you've got to be gripped by this screen here. Now you've got two choices now. You can either create your own from scratch, everything, or you can use one of the presets. Now the presets are okay, what I like here, they're okay. You'll select one, it'll give you a formation guide, and 433 is in it. Now if you select that, in it comes, and it fills in all your team instructions and some rules for you. It's okay when you're starting off, but sometimes the rules don't really mesh that well with each other so that's why today we're going to create it from scratch so down the bottom we go right down to the bottom to create your own style there press that and then it gives you all the different formations now today's video is about the 433 so we'll select 433 using a dm that's the formation we're going with one that's really popular in today's real football now once you've selected that you'll notice it puts players in them roles but nothing down your team instruction side and the roles it gives you are pretty Generic winger, winger, box to box, centre midfield support. They're all generic, so it's basically a blank canvas for you to build one. So let's look at that. We'll build a 4 3 3 based on aggressive wing backs. So on the right hand side, we've got wing back on attack. What he's going to do is he's going to dominate that right hand side. He's going to be up and down, up and down, providing the width, providing crosses. Now, in front of him, it doesn't make a lot of sense, therefore, to have a winger because they're going to be in the same positions, both trying to get up and down the flank. So we've got a bit more creative license then to use something different. All of these roles then come into play. Now what I like to do is I like to use either an inside forward or an inverted winger because it gives you a few options, meaning they'll stay out wide and then dart in, leaving space for your wing back on attack. For today's video, we're gonna use an inside forward. Now you notice I chose support there because my wing back is on attack. So to give a good balance to the team, a wing back on attack will be paired with an inside forward on support. On support, he's more likely to cut inside and then look for his wing back on attack. If he was on attack, he's more more a maverick. He's going to do things himself. He's going to dribble a bit more, shoot a bit more, look for the pass into the box. We want to use the wing back on attack as well, so we'll keep that inside forward on support. We can balance the team out really well by doing the opposite on the other side. So if you see there, we've got a wing back on support and an inside forward on attack. Wing back on support is still going to get up there. He's still going to provide the overlap now and again, but not as frequently as the guy on the right hand side. So your inside forward on the left on attack, he's gonna do more of the attacking work for us, supported by wing back on support. So immediately we've got a good balance to the team. One side, we've got wing back on attack, inside forward support on the other side, wing back support, inside forward attack. Are we making sense so far? Now you can use that philosophy of different roles. They don't have to be inside forward, of course. You, you can drop it down. You could use an advanced playmaker on attack. You can use a Trek with Tista if you're feeling a bit sexy wide target forward, there's all sorts you can do with that. For now, when you start to get to grips with the game, I would always go over inside forward or inverted winger, watch the game, see what they do, and then get a bit more experimental. As far as your centre backs go, it all depends on what sort of players you've got. If you've got a couple of players that are decent on the ball, of course you can drop it into a ball playing defender, but just be aware that they're gonna bypass your midfield quite a lot. So at the minute we keep them on central defender on defence. Now your defensive midfield role is a key one and again it's linked to how you want your team to play. If we take a team like Liverpool or Man City for example, you'd probably slot in a deep line playmaker there because they're going to have a lot of the ball and they can make things tick from there. Now notice I do have him on a defend duty, that's because we've got the two wing backs playing so we are aggressive on a defend duty, he'll hold his position more and he'll be able to cover defensively. In some games where you don't think you're going to dominate as much, there's absolutely nothing wrong with switching that deep line playmaker to perhaps a defensive midfield on defend, making it more solid, giving the ball up easier, so shorter passing rather than looking for the expansive one and just ticking over and holding his position. Either a great depends on your opposition and how you're playing. For this video, we're going to keep him on deep line playmaker on defence, so he's going to hold his position just in front of the back two. So your central midfielders are interesting, so in a 4-3-3, you're going to have a bit of space to pick up on. So in this gap here, if you're not playing an attacking midfielder or a striker that drops off, one of these two boys may have to get in there a bit more often. So what options can you use? For me, I like to use either a box-to-box -box midfielder or an advanced playmaker. 
So your advanced playmaker will drop into these holes there from a deeper position. If you're playing a 4 2 3 1, where the advanced playmaker might be in there, he's going to stick around that position more often. When the 4 3 3, he's going to start a bit deeper and then get into that position. The other option I like to use is a box to box midfielder. Now, if you click on the box to box midfielder, he doesn't have a lot of player instructions initially, but you can see I've added these ones in, making him a more aggressive version, taking more risks, dribbling more, getting further forward, and moving into channels. Meaning he's not only going to go up and down, up and down, he's also going to get across as well, support his inside forward and wing back. He's going to be a bit of an all round player. So you need a guy with a good engine for that role. This 4 3 3 we're making today is an aggressive one where we're going to dominate the ball. So I'm going to have an advanced playmaker in that role there on attack. I want him forward more often than not, dropping into these holes, combining with the front three. So in essence there, even though we're playing a 4-3-3, we've kind of got our front four with our two inside forwards, a striker and the advanced playmaker dropping in as well. So that means the fella next to him has got a lot of work to do. So with those aggressive players, we need someone else to balance it out a bit, a bit more defensive, winning the ball back and then laying it onto these players. And that's why we go with a ball winning midfielder in there. It doesn't have to be, you can drop him to a central midfielder on defence or another box-to-box -box midfielder, but a slightly less aggressive version. We go with a ball win midfielder. He's going to cover all this ground in here, trying to win the ball back, and when he does, he's going to lay it off to the more aggressive players. So now we're starting to take shape. We've got our wing-backs bombing on. We've got our inside forwards linking up with them, and we've got our midfield three providing a bit of protection and a bit of creativity. Now it's time for the all-important striker. Your striker role is really important. Obviously, he's going to get the goals for you, right? And he links up with other roles. So it all depends what other roles you're using. Specifically for me, your aggressive midfield role. When we're using the advanced playmaker on attack, he's going to get into these pockets there. Meaning we can have a striker who stays high up the pitch. Your advanced forward will do that. Usually operating in these areas here. So your advanced playmaker can provide the role in there. Now, if we're going to go with a different option, perhaps the box-to-box -box midfielder in the midfield role, there's a danger of your striker getting a bit isolated. So what I like to do then is have a drop-off role, maybe a deep line forward, drop into these pockets there, or even, I've been experimenting recently with a false nine. So he becomes a creative player as well, dropping off, supplying bullets for your inside forwards and on rushing midfielders. Today, we're going to be using the advanced playmaker on attack, so he's going to do the job in there, meaning we can use a striker that's a bit more advanced higher up the pitch, and we go with an advanced forward. We've got our roles and our team sorted then. This is for the aggressive 4 3 3, right? So let's get some team instructions involved as well and we can wrap this one up. So obviously, we'll start with our mentality. Now, mentality can change game to game. For me, if we're going to play an aggressive 4 3 3, we're going to be aggressive. So it's going to mean either a positive or attacking mentality. If I'm playing against a team I feel like I'm going to beat and I should beat, I will go attacking. It'll just mean your team are a bit more aggressive, a bit more direct with the passing. All of the games, I'll probably sit with a positive mentality. As a start point our system is built for wing backs to exploit gaps in behind so we're going to go fairly wide for the attacking width there is an argument to say you go quite narrow because you've got more players in the middle but because we're really going for the wing backs and inside forwards to do a lot of the work i'm going to go fairly wide there's no right or wrong answer there now overlap left overlap right i suggest you watch the game if your wing backs are not getting enough of the ball you might want to click that into action but because they're quite aggressive they should get enough of the ball anyway just remember that what it does do is it means those players high up the pitch such as your inside forwards will then hold the ball and wait for your full back so if you want a faster tempo game it might not be the one to press for today we're going to leave it off and rely on our wing backs to do it for themselves now because we're aggressive we're going to have a higher tempo because we're going to move that ball around fast relying on good technical players to do so I've selected lower crosses because my strikers aren't the biggest and this will just mean they get a little bit more of an advantage. Again, that's subjective onto what your team has. Now, the running at defence, I'm just going to leave that dribble less because I don't need them to do that. The boys who are going to dribble more are going to be the more talented dribblers anyway and they will do that, such as the inside forwards. You can see dribble more is already hard coded in. This is the interesting one this year. Initially, yes, we'll be going counter press and counter, but as the team gets a bit more fatigued, we'll probably drop the counter off so we can get a bit of stamina back because the energy levels are going to be sapped. We'll keep the counter press on because we still want to win that ball back high. Out of possession, again, this will depend on who you're playing and how aggressive you want to be. Initially, in our setup, we're going to go high defensive line and a high line of engagement. In trigger press, you can start much more often, drop it back, at points in the game because remember if you go a full game like that your players are going to wilt and wilt and wilt so we'll keep it more often we're going to prevent that 
goalkeeper distribution because we want to win the ball high up the park. So what we have there is a pretty solid positive 4-3-3 formation with some good width from the wing backs, inside forwards supplying a bit of a goal threat along with your forward and your advanced playmaker doing the creative bits. It's super solid. I use something very similar to this. Now you see it, pretty similar, isn't it? The only difference being I've got two inside forwards on attack with both my wing backs on support. Remember what I said, there's no right or wrong way to do things. You've just got to make sure your team's well balanced. We use this formation, we're doing pretty well. We're third in the league at the minute. And recently we came up against Juventus away. Scoring, pretty nice victory there, 3-0 away at Juve, which is no mean feat. So the 4-3-3 is well balanced, you can get lots of creativity in there, it can be super solid as well. It's a really nice alternative to a 4-2-3-1.